In this Cricut Design Space tutorial, I am showing you how to quickly and easily do knockout text with the brand new Cricut Offset tool. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants, your Cricut and crafting channel where I show you Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. And today I am showing you how to do knockout text with the brand new Cricut offset tool. I just went to check Cricut Design Space today and the update was just waiting for me to download it and I am just over the moon, so excited. We have all waited so, so long for this tool not to mention all the little workarounds that we had to come up with to get an offset type of look with our projects. But y'all, it is finally here and I cannot wait to show it to you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into Cricut Design Space. All right, so first things first, what I'm gonna do is come right over here to the left-hand side of the page and click on text. And in this text box, I'm gonna go ahead and type in the last name of my best friends. So I'm gonna type in here, Peterson, and I'm gonna do this in all caps. Now, since we are actually gonna be knocking out their first names out of their last name, what I'm wanting to do is make sure these letters are as bold and as close together as possible. So to do that, I wanna just make sure that the little text right here is selected. And I wanna come up here towards the top of the page right here where it says style. And I wanna change that from regular to bold, just like that. And I'm also wanting to make sure that these letters are closer together. So for that, I'm gonna come up here and select letter space and then just click this little down arrow like so. Now, sometimes this letter spacing tool works, sometimes it doesn't work as great. And so there is a little bit of a workaround for that. So if you're finding that it's not spacing your letters the way that you want them to be, what you can do is just come over here to the top right hand side of the page and click on ungroup. And basically what that does is it ungroups each of those letters onto its own layer. So we can actually move this S a little bit closer, just like so. You can do the same thing with the O, and essentially we're able to move each of these letters individually. All right, so I'm really liking this spacing for what we're doing today. So what I'm gonna do now is click and drag over all these letters, just like so, and I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right-hand side of the page, and I'm gonna click on Weld. Now the reason that I did weld instead of attach here is because I want this to be one single layer so that we can actually slice out the outline or the offset of their first names out of their last name, which will hopefully make a little bit more sense here shortly. So just, just stick with me. All right, so now I'm gonna come back over here and click on text again. I'm gonna type in here, Ryan, and then just hit space and then type in Alyssa. Just like that. So what I'm actually gonna do now is come up here towards the top left-hand side of the page and I'm gonna click right here where it says font, and I'm gonna come right over here where it says system, select that, and then I'm gonna do a search for lovely. And this is the font that I'm using right here. Now I did get this font from fontbundles.net, so I will have that linked for you all down in that description box below. But one of the things I absolutely love about this type of font is that it comes with all the little glyphs or swooshes or swashes or whatever you're wanting to call them that you so often see with the knockout style of text. What I also absolutely love about this is what Font Bundles actually makes available to make it so much easier to actually use those little glyphs or, or swashes. So as you can see right here, we are on the page where you can actually download this font. And it is marked down half price right now from $13 to $6.50. So obviously can't make any promises what that price is gonna be by the time that you watch the video and go check it out yourself. But currently this is the price and y'all that is a, a really great price. But one of the things I absolutely love about this is that you can actually select view font glyphs right here. And you're able to actually go through here and take a look at all the little glyphs, all the little swashes, and basically copy and paste this into Cricut Design Space as long as you have that type of font downloaded already. So I'm looking, actually looking for this little N right here because this is a lowercase N. And as you can see, it then goes into this little heart just like so, which would be perfect to end Ryan's name with and actually link into Lissa's name. This would be so cool, I love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and then come right back over here to Cricut Design Space. And let's go ahead and double click inside of this box. Let's go ahead and delete out the N on the end of his name, and then just go ahead and paste in that glyph like so. All right, so there is a space between that glyph and that A, so let's go ahead and delete that out like so. 
and there we go. So obviously the spacing is off on this as well, which we can actually take care of. Let's go ahead and come up here towards the top of the page and click this little down arrow on letter space. And let's just see how close we can get this to actually looking the way that it should. <laughs> All right, so for the most part, I'm really liking how Ryan's name is looking, but there are some, some things that's off with Alyssa's name. So what I'm gonna do is come back up here towards the top right-hand side of the page and click on ungroup. And we're gonna move Alyssa's A to just where it's connecting into that heart. I'll make sure that this L is connected as well, as well as this Y. All right, so now that we have all that the way that we want it to be, what we're gonna do now is actually click and drag over Ryan and Alyssa. And then we're gonna come down here towards the bottom right hand side of the page and click on weld. Now, although we're not directly using Ryan and Alyssa's name to slice anything out of another layer, it is important that we weld all that together since it is a script font. And since parts of those letters are overlapping with each other, we want that to be as seamless of a cut as possible. So welding really makes all that happen and come together beautifully. All right, so here is the fun part, the part that we've all been waiting on, which is the offset. So what I'm gonna do is come up here towards the top of the page, making sure that our script font right here is selected. And we are simply gonna select offset. All right, so just really quick, whenever it comes to this new offset tool, at the time of filming this, this tool is still in beta, which basically means that they're still running tests with it. They're still trying to iron out all the issues and that most likely there will be some little glitches here and there with it, but you know what? If you're okay with it, go ahead and dive in and start using it and playing around with it because you can't really break anything with it. So what I'm gonna do is basically grab this little slider right here. And as you can see, as I move this slider, this little blue outline around our selected text is growing just like so. Or you can actually shrink it back down. Or if you actually wanna create an inset, all you have to do is drag it past this little line right here in the middle. All right, so this is a perfect example of a glitch happening right here. I was trying to do an inset, but this font is already super thin as it is. And here is a little bit of a glitch that happened or occurred whenever I tried to do that, which I'm more than okay with. I'm okay with glitches. I'm okay with it being in beta. And I'm also okay with them working on this to perfect it and iron out all the issues because well, at least we know that they're working on it. At least we know that we have something coming that will be perfect, hopefully in the near future. Another thing that I've noticed is that sometimes whenever you move this little slider, sometimes it can take a little while for it to kind of catch up and actually make the changes to the offset. So as long as you're seeing this little moving green bar up here at the top of the screen, that means it's still thinking and that it's, and that it's still trying to process that command essentially. Now, whenever you have it wherever you want it to be, you can go ahead and just simply click on apply right here. And basically just like that, we have a completely new layer added to our design space canvas. So I can click on our names, drag it out of the way, and here is their last names right there, just like so, that we can then actually slice out of their last name, which is so, so cool. So what I'm actually gonna do is click undo, first of all, and just for the time being, I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag over their name and over the offset, just like so. And then I'm gonna come up here towards the top right-hand corner of the page and click on group. And with those two now grouped together, we can basically resize these as needed. So what I'm wanting to do now is basically resize this to fit onto their last name and basically take up as much space onto the last name as we want it to. So to do that, I'm gonna simply click on this little resize handle like so, shrink it down a little bit, and then we can just drag this right over top of their name. All right, so I'm liking how this is looking. So what I'm gonna do now is make sure that all this is centered together. So to do that, I'm gonna essentially click and drag over everything and then come up here towards the top of the canvas where it says align, and then I'm gonna select center. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is come over here to the right-hand side of the page where the layers panel is, click right here where it says group, and then I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup those. And so now I'm actually gonna grab their names. Without the offset, I'm leaving the offset in its place, but I'm grabbing the names and moving that out of the way. All right, so now we're gonna actually slice that shadow or that offset out of their last name. Now you can only slice if you have two layers selected. It will not work or it won't be available for you to click on if you have one layer selected and it will not be available for you to click on if you have three or more layers selected. So for that, what I'm gonna do is come over here and simply click and drag over their last name and over the offset. And then let's come down here towards the bottom right hand side of the page and click on slice. All right, so now I'm simply going to grab their last name, move that out of the way, and we can now basically grab their first names and then just move it right here into place. I mean, 
How cool is that, you guys? Like, I absolutely love this. Now, all of this right here is basically just garbage. It's basically just remnants of where we sliced all that out. So we don't need that anymore. And there we go. So what we could do if we wanted to is actually change up the color of their first names just by simply clicking on the layer that has their first names in it and then coming up here towards the top left-hand side of the page and changing the color. And we can change the color to be anything. Let's go ahead and just change it to red. And basically just by changing that color, their first names would actually be cut out on a completely different match that you could have different vinyl on. Now for me personally, I'm wanting it all to be just solid black. So what I'm gonna do is basically just click and drag over all this and then come down here towards the bottom right hand side of the page and click on weld. All right, so what we're gonna do now is essentially resize this to fit onto our surface. Now, what we're actually using for our surface today is this little plaque right here. And I did get this from Hobby Lobby when they did have a 40% off sale, um, which I believe just came out to be a few dollars when it was all said and done. And personally, I feel like this is just a really, really great thing to give away as a wedding gift or as an anniversary gift, or really, I mean, the sky's kind of the limit with this. Now I have already pre-measured this. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to the left-hand side of the page and click on shapes. And I'm gonna open up a square because well, we are creating a template and I love, love, love doing this. Now, first thing I wanna do is come up here towards the top of the canvas, right up here where it says size. And I'm gonna make sure that this little padlock right here is unlocked because if it stays locked, basically we can't have a different measurement for the width versus the height. It's basically gonna keep the same exact proportions. So with that unlocked, I can now put in here 10 and three quarters of an inch, or in this case, 10.75 for the width. And for the height, it's gonna be 2.75 or two and three quarters of an inch. Now y'all already know that the color of this template does not amount to a hill of beans, but I am gonna go ahead and change it anyway, just so we can get a, a fuller picture of what this is gonna end up looking like, but also so we can actually see what we're doing just a little bit better. So to do that, I wanna make sure that the template is selected and then come up here towards the top left-hand side of the page, click on this little color swatch, and we can just change this to, let's just do a light gray for now. And basically I'm now gonna right click our template and then select send it back. All right, so we can now take our design and resize it appropriately for our actual surface because we actually made that template in advance. All right, so I'm really liking how this is looking and we don't need that template anymore. So let's go ahead and delete that out. And now all we need to do is come up here towards the top right hand corner and select make it. So this is the matte preview screen where it's basically showing you where at on the mat this is all gonna be cut out at. And as you can see right here, it's gonna be up here in the top left hand corner. We don't need to mirror this because we are using a permanent adhesive vinyl. So let's come down here and select continue. All right, so on this page is where we put in our base material cut settings. Now I am using StarCraft HD, HD standing for high durability, the StarCraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl. This stuff, is just so good. It is by far my absolute favorite permanent adhesive vinyl. The quality is amazing. It's super, super affordable. You get like a 12 inch by five foot roll of this stuff. Five foot roll for $2.85. It's just, I mean, mind blowingly good, just all the way around. And I'm honestly obsessed. I also love that all the colors come in both a matte and a glossy finish. And I'm actually using the matte finish for today's project. Now, for this particular cut setting, I personally like to use the premium vinyl. So that's why I'm gonna select right over here. I am basically gonna select browse all materials and then just do a search for premium. And now we can basically go ahead and load our vinyl onto our cutting mats and get started cutting. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and unload our vinyl from our cutting mat. And to do that, like always, I always flip the mat over and then peel the mat away from the vinyl instead of the other way around, just to prevent any damage from happening to our vinyl. And I'm gonna go ahead and just trim out our design from the rest of the vinyl. Now to weed all this out, I'm gonna be using my little pin pin weeding tool right here. Absolutely love this guy for weeding out everything. It's, it's honestly the best weeding tool that is currently on the market. All 
All right, so now what we're gonna do is go ahead and grab the transfer tape, and this is the gold standard in my opinion. Like I love, love, love this transfer tape. This is the medium tech transfer tape. You can get this from 143 Vinyl, as well as the StarCraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl, and heck, I mean, even the pin pin. And you can actually use my code, which is crafty, and that will save you an additional 5% on your entire order. And it'll also help support this channel at the same time. So it's like a win-win. So if you buy anything from 143 Vinyl, you can use the code crafty to save 5% on the entire order, which is just amazing. All right, so I just pulled off some of this transfer tape with the sticky side facing up towards me. And I'm basically just gonna go ahead and grab our decal and then apply this face first down onto the transfer tape. And I am gonna kind of fold it a little bit like so, and then just kind of apply it from the center and then just roll outwards. I'm gonna grab my little squeegee tool. Just kind of burnish that down a little bit and then go ahead and trim out our decal from the transfer tape. Now what I absolutely love about this transfer tape is that it doesn't leave any type of residue on your vinyl, no matter how long you actually leave it applied to your vinyl. And I also love that you can use this stuff over and over and over again. Like I use some of these sheets up to 10 times or more per project or just in general. It's just all around amazing. All right, so now I'm gonna flip this over and then just burnish this down some more. Now again, I am using a squeegee tool. I am not using the Cricut scraper tool. You can use the Cricut scraper tool as a squeegee if you're super, super careful. But if you've ever noticed that you actually scratched up your vinyl with that Cricut scraper tool, well, then you're not alone. It's not actually meant to be used as a squeegee. It's meant to be used as a scraper tool to actually get stuff scraped off of your mat. So what I'm actually doing is using this little squeegee tool. Oh, and by the way, this, as well as everything else that I've used or mentioned in this video will be listed and linked for you all down in that description box below. All right, so now I'm gonna flip this back over and then peel the backing paper off of the transfer tape and off of our vinyl. All right, so there is a rule of thumb whenever it comes to applying a permanent vinyl to a surface. And that rule of thumb is this, that the smoother, the cleaner and the shinier the surface, the better that permanent vinyl will actually cure and adhere to that surface. Now, in this case, I believe that this plaque right here is actually enamel, and I have already made sure that it's clean by wiping it down with a rubbing alcohol. And I always, always, always recommend that. If you're applying a vinyl to a smooth surface, try wiping it down with rubbing alcohol just to prep it for that permanent vinyl. Now, before I actually dive in and try to actually apply this down to the surface, what I always like doing is grabbing some parchment paper and then using this as a barrier between my vinyl and my surface. So I'm doing basically this right here. I'm actually gonna move this out of the way and I'm going to apply my vinyl down to this parchment paper, but just leave a little smidgen of this vinyl peeking out up top above the parchment paper. All right, so something just like this should do the trick, whereas you can see most of this is covered by the parchment paper, but there's just a little bit of that vinyl peeking out up top. Now I have heard of some people having issues with their vinyl actually sticking and adhering to their parchment paper. Um, in most cases or most scenarios, they've said that they've actually gotten that, that roll of parchment paper from the dollar store. I have never tried that, so I can neither confirm nor deny, but this is actually a Kroger off-brand or generic brand of parchment paper. And I've also tried out the brand name, like Reynolds Wrap parchment paper as well. And that's always worked out really well for me. So you may wanna actually just test this out on a small little portion portion of vinyl and a small portion of parchment paper, just so you don't have to run the risk of actually ruining or wasting your materials. All right, so this parchment paper is acting as a barrier between our vinyl and our surface. So I'm basically just gonna get this all lined up on our surface like so. And then whenever I'm ready to, uh, to commit to a spot, we can go ahead and lay down the top portion of vinyl onto the surface. All right, so I'm really liking that spot right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow the top portion of this vinyl to lay down onto that surface. You can even grab your little squeegee tool if you want to as well, and then just smooth this down. And now what we're gonna do is actually lift this up, pull the transfer tape up, and then slide that parchment paper out. 
And then we're gonna very, very carefully allow the rest of this vinyl to kind of lay down. And what I like to do in the process is actually use a little squeegee tool to kind of help push that down as we go. All right, so once you got it all squeegee down or burnished down, what we can go ahead and do is just grab a corner of that transfer tape and slowly start peeling it off. Now, if you all liked today's episode or if you learned something new, it would honestly mean the world to me and help me out so much here on YouTube. If you took just two seconds to stamp that like button as well as drop a comment down in the comment section below. Also, while you're at it, if you are new around here to this channel, well then you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and ringing that little bell for all the notifications because I put out new Cricut tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week and you don't want to have to miss a single Cricut minute, especially once you find out what is coming up very soon this year. Y'all aren't even ready. It is just so, so good and I am so, so, so excited. Thank you all so much for watching today's episode. I am just so extremely grateful for each and every single one of y'all. And until next time, stay crafty.